this chapter we will be looking at the drive system, the transmission, clutch, drive tube, brake, and tub hub. How they work, how they can fail, and how you can fix them. Now to remove the tub ring, press down on each of the side clips and pull. There is a seal on the inside of this ring to keep splashing and small amounts of water within the tub. This is called a spanner wrench and it is necessary if you are going to replace the inner tub or any part of the main drive system. The spanner wrench is the one specialty tool needed to repair this washer. There are four pins on, the, on it that insert down onto four notches on the spanner tub ring. We use this wrench to grasp the tub nut and hammer in the counterclockwise direction to remove it. Be careful not to hit the inner tub with your hammer or the porcelain coating may chip and allow rusting. Completely remove the spanner ring and remove the tub by lifting it off of the hub that the spanner ring was attached to. If the tub is rusted to the hub, press down quickly on the outer rim of the tub at several points to free it. And be cautious not to break the fill spout while lifting this free. Hopefully push the back panel back with your elbow as you lift. The hub is the part that holds the inner tub to the drive tube. Remove the hub from the drive tube by striking it from below. As you can see there are two notches that line up with two tabs on the drive tube. These notches should be fixed in place with the drive tube. We'll take a closer look at the hub in a few minutes. Now from the bottom of the washer, we will remove the transmission. Remove the three half inch nuts that attach the transmission to the washer frame. Now these machines have a lot of sharp edges, so it's a good idea to use some kind of an extension to your ratchet and keep your hands out of harm's way. Remove the wiring harness from the side mount by squeezing the back of the clip with a pair of pliers. Now pull the transmission straight out from the drive tube. If you are pulling straight, it should slide out fairly easily. This is the clutch. We'll look more closely at that in a moment. Next we will look at the brake and drive tube. The brake will release from the side walls if it is rotating counterclockwise, which is the direction for spin. When the drive is moving clockwise for the agitation stroke, the disc will expand, holding the inner tub from movement. To remove the drive tube, grasp the brake, brake assembly and pull while rotating counterclockwise to release the pads from the sidewall. Now we can see how the drive system of the washer functions within the washer. The drive tube slides over the drive shaft, engaging the clutch with the brake lever. The transmission controls the inner tub through this clutch. 
This is commonly the cause that the washer is not spinning at full speed and is leaving a large amount of water in the clothing at the end of the cycle. The pads can become worn down and begin to slip against the clutch wall instead of transferring the energy to the inner tub for spin. Sometimes oil leaking from the transmission will lubricate the clutch pads and also allow slipping to occur and slow spinning. To replace the clutch, simply compress the clutch spring with a pair of pliers and remove it from the clutch housing. Usually this housing won't need to be replaced unless you can feel or see damage or scarring. There are three points of contact in this new clutch. Older washers used a full ring of pad and were highly unlikely to ever need replacement. However, this new style is fairly common to need replacement. Even more so now that Whirlpool is producing a metal reinforced motor coupling. This is the next point of weakness. To reinstall, compress the clutch ring and slide it back into place. It should be slid into the housing as far as it will go. Now back to the drive tube and hub. The hub rests on top of the drive tube and is kept in alignment with two notches that lock the hub into place preventing slip. Over time, slipping during spin and braking will cause these notches to become ground down and allow the tub to hop or bump to a stop whenever the brake is activated, such as a loud thumping noise when the lid is open. I wanted to show you the relationship within the drive components. You don't need to pull the transmission to replace the hub. Simply pull the inner tub and replace. When you receive your new transmission, you will need to swap a few parts over from your old one. First, the motor mounting plate. Pull the plate by removing the two half inch bolts that attach it to the transmission with your ratchet. The new transmission will usually come with half of the motor coupling pre-installed. You will also need to remove the clutch. The clutch is a separate part and will not come installed in your shiny new transmission. First remove the spacer disc that covers the clutch mounting clips. Next wedge a screwdriver into the first clip and use leverage to pull the clip out from the drive shaft slots. Lastly, we will remove this ring clip that attaches the clutch to the transmission. Insert your screwdriver under the end of the clip and work it out from under the last of the four tabs. Now you'll be able to remove the clutch and swap it over. Now let's look at how to reinstall the clutch. First we will reinstall this clutch clip. Slide the ring back down the drive shaft and insert the bent end into the hole on the clutch plate. First slide the ring under the first two tabs of the transmission and use a pair of pliers to push the clip under the remaining tabs and into position. Be careful not to let the curved end rise out of the hole. That's going to keep the clutch attached to the transmission. Don't pull on this plate too hard because you can actually pull one of the transmission gears out through the top and rupture the seal. Next we are going to reinstall the side clip by sliding it into the two grooves on the side of the drive shaft. Once you have the clip lined up, use your pliers to squeeze the clip back into place by putting one side on the end of the clip and the other on the back side of the drive shaft. It's very important that you remember to reinstall the spacer ring over the clutch clip or the brake arm will snap off the first time the washer runs a cycle. Reinstall the motor mounting plate onto your new transmission and then you're ready for reinstallation. The motor mounting plate should be facing up towards the front of the washer. Insert the drive shaft into the brake drive tube and slide it in. The motor coupling is the part that transfers power from the motor to the drive system. It is a common part to fail. The motor and motor coupling chapter looks at this part in greater detail. You can see here the metal reinforced motor coupling I was telling you about earlier. To reinstall the motor, position the plug terminal to the right of the motor. Position the motor coupling at the 12 o'clock position to match the position of the coupling that is installed on the side of the transmission.
Position all of the rubber grommets that dampen vibration from the motor onto the motor mounting plate. This is the tricky part, so take your time. Assuming that the coupling is lined up, set the two lower pins on the back of the motor into the dampening grommets on the motor mounting plate and tip the motor up into position. I've done this a few times, so if you don't get it on the first try, just keep trying and you'll get it. Hold the motor up and reinstall your top clip first. Insert it vertically and rotate it 90 degrees. Once that clip is snapped into place, the motor will stay in position making it much simpler to reinstall your lower clip. When you are reinstalling the tub nut, you will need to hammer it fairly tight. You don't want the tub to be slipping during the brake action, as we talked about earlier. 